Director Ken Oliver, uh, and I'll go ahead. The floor is yours. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, with me is uh, Susan Dry, who's the Assistant Director of our Administrative Services. We also have a few uh, library-related uh, folks in the crowd. Uh, Robert Orman, who is our uh, Secretary of the Library Board, is with us today. We have senior staff, uh, including Larry Price, who's the Assistant Director of Branch Services, Elise Adler, who is uh, Assistant Director for Community Engagement, Felicia Wilson, who is part of our, uh, who's the Assistant Director for our Collections and Technology. Uh, we also have a number of other staff uh, in the audience, and I believe we have some friends of Richland Park out there as well. So thank you all for uh, supporting me today. <clears throat> As I hope you're aware, the Nashville Public Library operates 21 locations with approximately 380 staff, over 300 regular Thank volunteers, you so much for your and I last year those volunteers logged 11,500 hours. This fiscal year, we expect to exceed the library's checkout total of 5.4 million items from last year and see approximately 3.4 million visitors in our facilities. Many of those folks will be attending our over 14,000 programs. Library programs and services such as Limitless Libraries, Bringing Books to Life, Studio NPL, the Nashville After Zone Alliance, Digital Inclusion Classes, the Summer Reading Challenge, Adult Literacy Services, Pathway for New Americans, Core Children's Services, the Metro Archives, our citywide partnership in the Grade Level Reading Initiative, Blueprint for Early Childhood Success, and community exhibits such as the Violins of Hope are critical to Nashville. As a result of Limitless Libraries alone, 82,000 MNPS students have library cards. I do want to make sure and point out how much we appreciate your support both the council and the mayor's office over the last year. Some of the things that you've provided us include support of our 4% materials collection development fund at $3.5 million, reaching a goal we have had in place for several years. This is huge for Nashville and its readers. Capital funds for the Madison branch renovation, which is on schedule to be completed this fall, Planning funds for a new Hadley Branch Library, purchase of a site for the new Donaldson Branch Library as an anchor for the new downtown Donaldson development, and your continued support. Director of Oliver, can you speak up? They can't hear you. Oh, in I'm back. sorry. I'm trying. Continued support of the Nashville After Zone Alliance. Regrettably, we do face some serious budget challenges now and in the future. The library before, budget before you is not a status quo budget, but will actually result in NPL dealing with approximately half a million dollars in reductions in the fiscal year. I'm practically eating the mic. <laughs> I want to point out, <clears throat> first of all, in your budget sheet that the transfer of community partnership funds is not an operational increase to our programs. It reflects the $200,000 in grants the library is now administering. Okay, that better? Thank you. The Nashville After Zone Alliance is facing a fee increase in its operational budget. An increase in bus fees this coming year will result in a loss of student slots as we face an increase in student literacy problems. The Nashville Public Library funding reset will impact us as well. This is due to a loss of 10% in our operational support this year with an additional 15% reduction anticipated next year. Some direct results of those program reductions will include bringing books to life, digital inclusion, civil rights, and civil society programs associated with the civil rights room. Requests in this year's Metro budget process con to continue a shift of core positions from the National Public Library Foundation to Metro to offset these reductions were unfunded. A specific example of the impact of these reductions 
can be seen in our civil rights programming. We will be losing one staff position previously funded by, through a private donor. 6,400 6, people have so far attended programs related to civil rights and a civil inclusion this year. When all is said and done, we are committed to providing Nashville great library service. We remain deliberate and thoughtful with all of our open staff positions. We are repurposing and shifting positions as needed. And we continue to be intentional around building a staff that reflects the diversity of our community. And finally, we are always focused on creative and resourceful solutions as our very capable and wonderful staff deal with day-to-day -day challenges. Thank you. Thank you so much, Director. Vice Chair Schulman. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, Director, um, so a couple things, and you'll probably hear when I ask uh, Director Odom the same question. Um, planning for libraries, um, we're just watching from the standpoint of are there some things that we should be wary of for the next year or the next year mm -hmm. in terms of new sites coming online that are going to require new positions. I know mm -hmm. some of them may be renovations or replacing right. other ones, but is there anything that we need to be wary of as we look forward to well, the future? Well, hopefully you're not wary of it, but you're looking forward to it. Uh, we have a, we've had a master facilities plan in place for some time, and uh, you've seen the renovations that have taken place at Bordeaux, uh, Edmondson Pike, some of the other locations. Uh, you've recently made the purchase for Donaldson, which will include a staffing increase. Uh, you know, our immediate, our immediate future projects, uh, we have money for the planning on Hadley, the Hadley Branch Library, and we'd like to find a site for that. That will increase the need for staffing. We really want to get to a Richland Par Park Branch replacement in the not too distant future. Uh, we have main library renovations, which would be expanding programming there. And we're very much involved in the discussions at Envision Casey, uh, where we would like to put a new branch. So nearly all of those programs and branches we're talking about would require additional staffing. Okay, I, I guess, um, yeah, weary, weary, <laughs> uh, whatever it is, uh, we're trying to be, uh, obviously, you know, we're trying to be right. careful. We've got uh, right. A, um, right now a pretty ugly budget in mm. front of us. and. Um, to be much more cautious about mm -hmm. what may be coming down the road mm -hmm. so we can prepare for it so we're not right. we're not surprised mm -hmm. um so any of that stuff um as as the as we start looking towards the future we may need to know what okay. those things are okay um so you mentioned uh this is the the after school program mm -hmm. nasa mm -hmm. um could, do you mind going into a little bit more detail? So you're talking about bus fees and slots. Right. What are we talking about and um, what happened? What's going on with that? Okay. Um, the Nashville After Zone Alliance is very reliant on busing services to make sure students are, attend the programs. And those programs are particularly um, large and important uh, throughout the city, but they're heavily used in the Northwest and the Southeast areas. Um, the reduction that we're talking about is there's been an increase in our bus fees. Fees are charged by the schools to the program. Uh, they've been in, actually, they probably should have gone up several years ago, but they've carried those fees. And so now we're looking at about $254,000 in increases. Um, if we do not cover that, we will, that's the equivalent of about 200 slots for students in the after school program. So what we will need to do is look at eliminating those slots. The, so, in, the entire enrollment in the program is about 2,000. So a, a slot is a person? Is a person. Okay, mm -hmm. and these are, these are young people that are going to programs after school? Yes. Mm -hmm. All right, so, um, so this, was fun, this used to be funded through the schools? No, th this program originated as a program in the mayor's office under Mayor Dean, and okay. it was moved over to the library several years ago and uh, we administer it through the library. Uh, we contract out with providers to assist in the curriculum of those programs. I, I guess what I'm talking about yeah. is the, the money. Mm -hmm. Last year you- The money had, is in our budget. The money was in your budget yes. last year. Yes. It's not in this year. Well, this is an, actually an increase to that service program. 
okay. Well, I'm trying to figure out your 254, the 254, mm -hmm. you're short. You don't have that for these slots. That's correct. Okay. So did we have it last year? We had it last year. Okay. Yes. All right. So this year we don't have it. Right. It's not in your budget. Right. Okay. All right. So it's actually a decrease mm -hmm. overall in terms right. of, but I got it. Okay. So if we don't fund it, then 200 kids don't get it to take advantage yes. of this program. Okay. And then um, tell me, uh, if you don't mind, on the, uh, the Public Library Foundation mm -hmm. funded a, at least one position, maybe funded more. Right. Uh, what did they fund and what are they not able to fund this year? Okay. This is, this is a larger question than you probably want to have time for, but they, pro okay. they provide the library a significant amount of operating money and a number of staff. Okay. Uh, because the Library Foundation is in a position it needs to reset its budget due to revenue issues, we are looking at basically a 10% reduction this year, which is $300,000, and another 15% next year. Um, we use the foundation funding to fund a number of positions that provide direct services in many of the programs that I mentioned to you. In many ways, we're a great public-private partnership because we have the foundation really supporting some vital programs. The ones that I mentioned are the ones that are particularly critical to us. Uh, civil rights and civil society, as you know, trains students, Nashville police, TBI, um, and they provide continuous programming through the civil rights room. The position in that area was a specific donor who was providing funding for a position. If that position goes away, by necessity, there will be less programming. Do we know what the cost is for that position? We have that. I could provide it for you. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Vi uh, Vice Chair Shulman. Councilman Glover. Thank you, Chair. Well, I realize I've upset the entire room, and that's okay. Okay. <clears throat> but I'm going to ask you a question, if I may. Sure. And I want to rephrase it from the last question I asked with, with Parks. Mm -hmm. were, you were your employees that work for libraries, were they anticipating a 3% cost of living adjustment this year? I have not visited with them about it, but I would anticipate that the answer would be yes. Okay, and so let me expand that question, if I may. Mm -hmm. Given the promise that was made last year on a COLA that would be provided this year and next year both, would you think they may think they were getting a cost of living adjustment next year as well? If they've not been paying attention, I would say yes. Okay. Well, so... <laughs> Paying attention. I, 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 I mean, no, no, no. That, that's a great way of saying it. Uh, if we've not been paying attention, because that's exactly what we've not been doing, is paying attention with the amount of money we've been spending on things. So that's why I'm asking the question. You know, I, I think priorities have to be priorities. <clears throat> and so that's why I was asking you if the employees you have working for the library felt like that they were going to get the cost of living adjustment this year. Mm -hmm. And then, I, again, I expanded the question to next year as well. Mm -hmm. So I don't think anybody's happy about having to cut things. Mm -hmm. I don't think anybody's happy about having to make hard decisions mm -hmm. because it's tough. Mm -hmm. But we're going to have to. And so I appreciate your candor, and I appreciate you, you answering the question and, and giving me the answer to the question in a very forthright and honest way. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councilman. This got me in trouble last time. Councilman Cooper. At large, <laughs> at large. Um, <laughs> thank you. Um, thank you, Director, and congratulations once again on being Library of the Year. Um, quick question, just so that I make sure I understand it. The uh, very good. Um, the current budget, uh, as it is right now, would require the cut of 250 slots at NASA. Correct. At the current budget, mm -hmm. as it is. Okay. Uh, if there's no change, that does imply a cut of 250 That's slots. Correct. Okay. And then in the $250,000 uh, increased transportation fees, that that's for bus usage. That's correct. 
And who is providing that? Is MMPS providing that? Yes. So really that's a bill that's sort of an intergovernment payment mm -hmm. in effect from the library to MMPS for their bus services for this. Mm -hmm. And did they, how did, did you, they're coming later in the week. Um, how, how did they come up with that amount of money? Did, did, is this? Um, they, they have a formula based on student and cost per trip and that sort of calculation. I mean, they have a very specific formula. Okay, so, so it's their formula and, right. and we're kind of stuck mm -hmm. with, with that. Okay, um, super, th very grateful for um, enlightenment on those two things. So it's just, it's, it's helping defray the MMPS bus cost hopefully for just their marginal costs and not anything right, else. Right, um, and the reason we knew that number was that early in the budget process, we were talking about understanding what fees were going up and just looking at the ones that would keep us even, so that is how we came up with that okay. number. But what's directly at stake is these 250 slots 200, for the- 200 no, slots. 200 mm -hmm. slots. Mm -hmm. Appreciate it, and again, congratulations again for the awards. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman Cooper at large. Council Lady Henderson. Thank you, Chair Vircher. Hi, Director Oliver. Hello. Um, I wanted to ask you about two things that I think got quite a bit of press uh, last year and just see kind of what the effect has been or what you're seeing. Okay. Um, and that would be um, providing uh, library cards and access um, to folks out of county. Mm -hmm and then additionally uh, eliminating um, fees for uh, late returns. Can okay. you just speak to what okay. that has kind of meant from a revenue standpoint, or if it's de minimis? Well, first, the out-of-county library cards are negligible, and we've okay. actually been looking at those numbers, and I, I can get those for you, but those are very small. We anticipated when we began that that it would be a, a small number, and, and we'll get those to you specifically. But the wonderful thing about that is since Nashville took the lead on that, the libraries and the counties around Nashville have been taking the same action with their policies. Great, I appreciate that. I have, I have a lot of... Um, District 34 right. residents that it do right. enjoy the, the children's right. offerings at the Brentwood right. Library. So right. that's, yeah. And, and I think the biggest thing we're seeing on the elimination of fines is that we're seeing um, on the overdues is that we're seeing longer lists on our holds. And we're, we're waiting for a year's worth of data before we can really understand what that's doing to impact us. But some of that is we're able to adjust our formula on how many books we purchase. But the other mm -hmm. thing to kind of remember on that is that we're, we continue to see an increase in electronic books going up. Absolutely, yeah. And those automatically go away when, when they're due, as you probably know. Right. So right. those would not have been fee-bearing type of materials anyway. Okay, understood. Thank you. Um, additionally, I wanted to ask, as it relates to... Um, the... Uh, revenue or uh, that's provided by the Library Foundation mm -hmm. um, going down 10% next year mm -hmm. and 15% mm -hmm. the year after. Um, you mentioned particularly um, the, the Civil Rights Room uh, staff member. Uh, can you speak to, in anticipation of that, what are you all doing kind of proactively to We're, seek out other grant funding opportunities? Well. What we do continually, and again, this is a great public-private partnership, is we're constantly working with the foundation on the private side for private f private grants. And the family foundations, you mean? Family foundations, mm -hmm. corporations, what have you. So we're always there. And then we're also very proactive on the state and federal side. So we do receive grants when it comes to some of our services like the archives, uh, equal access, and even humanities grants into the civil rights room. So we're trying, to, we're, we're working both ways and really again, the foundation is a great supporter of what we're doing because they collaborate with library staff to help us find those opportunities. I appreciate that, that's excellent to hear. We just, in our previous budget session, I kind of posed the same question right. to Parks. Um, mm -hmm. And so I would be interested to know if, if you could just share a little bit more about how that uh, that 
that model works? Like if there's a particular staff member internal to the foundation, do they work with just one staff member? I mean, how do they sort of collaborate? And then if you could also share for us um, how much you do uh, uh, proactively garner in um, humanities funding, state and federal, just your the grant space, if you could just kind of break that out you know, the foundations from which you are uh, getting that or the state and federal programs that you're getting. Okay, would you like me to, I, it's a long list, would you like me to provide that to you? In, indeed, afterwards, okay. I'm just asking for okay. a follow-up, if you sure. would send sure, it um, to and, me. And, uh, and and just as kind of a quick note, Susan's office, our business office, is constantly, is constantly collaborating with the person in the foundation who does that, and it's only a part-time job for the person in the foundation. But it's very critical because our staff feed into Susan and then they feed into the foundation. Absolutely, I appreciate y'all are collaborating that way and proactively seeking that. Thank you. Thank you so much, Council Lady. Council Lady Allen. <laughs> Just one, sorry, I, was, I didn't write the question down. That's always dangerous. Um, going back to the NASA and the buses, um, are these are MNPS buses as opposed to city buses. Is yes. there any way to make use of the of the um, thrive, but I can't remember the name of it, but this, the bus program that allows students to ride the city buses, perhaps for some number of those students that might have that option? I'm not, I'm not aware that that option has been looked at, and I can certainly check into that. I think the key is that these are buses that are already coming to the school, and they have the routes set up for the students, but I can certainly check with the NASA staff and, and, tell, and find that out. If that might help. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much, Council Lady Allen. Council Lady Karen Johnson. Thank you, Chair Vercher. Thank you, Director Oliver. Uh, you're another um, department within Metro government that does a lot with little. And so um, your fiscal leadership, uh, what you and uh, all of the outstanding staff for the library as well as your board does is uh, commendable and appreciate it. And also congratulations from, my, from me you. as well on being uh, Library of the Year. Uh, that is a tremendous honor. And we are proud as a city to have an award-winning library. Thank you. <laughs> uh, department. So I'm going back to the NASA, because last uh -huh. year I asked uh -huh. this question. Um, and you had shared that in last year's budget, uh -huh that um, the funds were given an additional 100 slots to I, serve underserved students? I believe that's correct. Okay, and then this year what I'm seeing is that 250 slots? We're looking uh, at a potential reduction in 200 slots. So they're not being cut, just a potential. Right, okay. again, there, there's, a, there's a cost per each slot or pre right. student in the program. And, and you said it was 1,200 per slot. I believe that's last correct. Last year. And, and it may have gone up slightly, but that's about right. So by the time you, you take that into the 250,000 that we would not be able to cover any other way other than taking it out of another part of the budget, I believe that equates to about 200. Okay. We wanna work with you yeah. <laughs> to, to um, prevent that from happening, it, it, it makes me nervous uh -huh. because that program is so important in keeping our youth off the streets uh -huh. and um, keeping them in activities that help them academically and socially. And so, uh -huh. you know, we, we say education is our city's priority. Uh -huh. Yes, it started out in the mayor's office and it's kind of been trickled down and uh -huh. put into place the way it is now. But I think we, we need to work together as a council with you in providing the adequate support mm -hmm. to not see any cuts mm -hmm. in that program. And I'm like Council Lady Allen, I was gonna ask about, did you explore opportunities with MTA um, to reduce those costs? I know that um, Fleet over at Metro Schools is factoring in mm -hmm. um, a, um, factoring in personnel costs, they're factoring in the fuel costs uh -huh. and things of that sort into that equation. And so maybe if we can look at maybe how we can get the fuel costs covered in another way, kind of break it apart 
and see how maybe we can get grant funding for some of those pieces or, or maybe looking at the services of MTA and how they can interconnect um, to, pro to keep those opportunities available. Um, I think that's, that's worth the effort on all of our part. Okay. We hear you, and we'll get you, we'll get you whatever <laughs> fiscal information we have to provide you a better concept of this. Thank you. Thank you so much, Council Lady. Councilman uh, Bettney. Uh, thank you, Chair. Were you here when I asked Mr. Jamison the question before? Yes. Okay, so you are also going to have to uh, look into immigration enforcement with your employees, I guess. Honest, we'll be looking at it. Our uh, guards are not armed and they are not actually uh, considered police personnel. So but you have employees that interact with the public. Pardon? So you have employees that interact with the public? Yes, absolutely. So I hate to, I know this is going to be very unpopular, and I hate to ask this question, mm -hmm. but I'm going to ask you to also run the numbers and see how much will it cost to train your employees in immigration law so mm -hmm. I don't get arrested when I go pick up your book at okay. the library. Okay, we will absolutely be happy to do that. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much, Councilman Bettney. Director Oliver, thank you so much you. to your team and congratulations again. Um, this concludes your budget hearing. If the Arts Commission can begin making your way down, um, we will continue with our with our hearings. Again, thank you.